This week on the Weekend Fisherman, fantastic speckled trout fishing, lively action with my buddy Ron and Clarence, our guide. Beautiful fish. Stay tuned for some exciting action this week. Aren't they gorgeous? Yeah. Beautiful fish. Oh, beautiful. We begin this adventure with a helicopter ride from the main camp to a new area that our guide Clarence discovered which holds speckled trout. With great anticipation we make our way down a hill to a narrow neck that separates the two lakes. Looking back this scene reminds me of my youth when exploring was part of everyday life, when there seemed to be so much time to do just whatever. These hills are full of blueberries, and that makes for long walks on this short trail. And a short trail to the fishing is what Ron is hoping for with this big smile. As we prepare to experience the fishing, our guide displays great patience, for he knows what lies ahead. Hey Ron, you have to hurry up here. If you're going to well, fish just, in the wilderness, you have my, to get, got you got to get cracking. Can't be uh, <laughs> dilly daddling. <laughs> Ron, look what you're missing. I, I, my lure's caught in a... <laughs> All just, these excuses. Would you leave a little for me, will you? <laughs> All these excuses. <laughs> what are you using? I'm using a lure. <laughs> so what I got on is good enough then, eh? I think uh, you're in luck if you just use a lure. Okay, here I come. I'll drop off this bank here. Yeah, it's... Oh, Ron! Oh. Two nothing, Ron! Two! <laughs> <laughs> we let, I let that one go, but we'll keep this one because this one's like bigger. <laughs> I, want, I, wanted to, I wanted to keep the I wanted to keep the bigger ones wrong. Now, mm. <laughs> now it took Ron a little while to get ready, you see? But he's doing but, very well now. Wow. That's my second cast. I can't, uh, I can't tell you, Ron, that there isn't a place on this earth like Canada where you can get fishing like this. There is none. When we were walking up here, we were talking about a place in Canada or a place in the world where you can go untamed. And I don't know any other place in the entire world where it's untamed like this fish. <laughs> And that big, big guy's gone. <laughs> Did you? He's gone Zola. Here. Wow. Are they ever beautiful fish? Yeah. Look at the red on that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. That fish I had was probably like a five pound speckle and it's gone. Okay, let me help you get that unhooked and. I got my pliers here. And we'll get to some more. I'll give you a hand, Ron. Wow. Just a pliers thing. You know, Ron, adventure travel. The weekend fisherman goes to normal places, you know, like your backyard, lakes and streams and creeks. But once a year, we try to go away and do something really different. The untamed Canada. You know, the reason I say that is because when I was a kid, I was flying back on a plane and I had a gentleman one time say to me, that's God's country. And I went, where's that? He goes right down there, Canada. So... Is this not the greatest fishing in the oh, world? This is unbelievable. The, the flight in here, I mean, uh, we got off the helicopter on the way in, and I said to, I said to you, I said, I wonder if anybody's ever walked here before, because this yeah. is just in the middle of no place. Yeah, well, yeah. we're going to show you what it's like in Canada to fish when they call it I'm, I'm just in the walk. middle of no place. I'll just watch. In the middle of no place. Oh, there's one. Oh! oh. <laughs> there, we'll just fire it back out. <laughs> In the middle of no place. No, it is beautiful. There he and is. There he is. <laughs> oh, nice one. There he is. That is a beautiful. Isn't that? Look at the colors on that speck. 
You know, a lot of people say the bugs are terrible in the north. You the bugs are not. You forget about them. The bugs are not terrible in the north. The fish are <laughs> terrible in the north. Ron, well, why don't you cast over there? I'll our do guide, that. our guide, you know, certainly was the inspiration to where they were. We looked at a couple spots. He said no good. Then he said let's go here and yeah, cast out there, Ron. I the people at home certainly want to see some beautiful fish. Okay, here I go. Wow, Ron, look at the colors of this one here. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Oh. You know, this is the first show where I'm not going to have to tell you how to fish here. You take a, a little lure, preferably a spinner, and throw it out. i got to throw them twice. That's yeah. Wow. Maybe I'm using the wrong <laughs> color here, Frank. Look at the size of that fish. It's a gorgeous one, nice. isn't it? What is that? Six. Bro, at 18 inches? A pure spackle. Oh, 20 inches. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get serious down here. Just... Oh man, you know this this is the greatest part of being in this country. <laughs> You know, besides all the great other things about living here and enjoying it, the fishing in the wilderness. I told Ron earlier in the year that I had to take him to the James Bay region to fish. And you're here now. Mm -hmm. With his fly rod in hand and a look of determination in his face, Ron hooks his very first fly rod speckle. Oh, oh. <laughs> he just found out he was hooked. Just about to tore the, tore the rod out of my hands. Frank, you gotta see the size of this. Oh. <laughs> no, he's not ready yet. He's gone. He's right in front of me. He's right. Break your fly lines? He's right there. Did you break it? Yeah, he's right here. You see him? Just let two bubbles up. As disheartening as Ron feels with this big speckle only inches away and his only green woolly bugger fly stuck in the fish's mouth, maybe, just maybe, all is not lost. Our guide Clarence fights a nice speckle, all smiles, we know that the guide on this trip enjoys catching fish as much as we do. <laughs> Look at the size of this fish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a big uh, speckled trout, I tell you. <laughs> well, he's a first timer, Frank. That's why. This is your first time, eh? <laughs> oh. Well, I got you fly back. <laughs> Well, his luck is out. <laughs> He's lunch. As luck would have it, Clarence catches the fish that Ron had lost. How do we know? Well, check out the green woolly bugger in his mouth. And the lure. That's incredible. Frank, what do you got on there? I lost my last woolly bugger. I had this little tiny black mat. Yeah. And the black flies were biting a little earlier, so I put that on, and there's a pool of them here. A pool. Go ahead, help yourself. I'll I'm gonna. Oops. Oh, that's the uh, cross line. <laughs> you go ahead. I'll get behind you. Sure. The beauty on the fly rod. Oh. I guess we're on the spin caster. <laughs> oh, there's another one inside. Is that yours? No, that's yours. Is that a big one? There's another one coming in. There's five of them. You know what, folks? You know when you're growing up and you're thinking about uh, the fun things that you used to do? When I was a kid, I used to fish the back creeks of my parents' farm with my buddy Ron. And when you grow old with people, some of the great things you get to grow old doing are fishing and exploring. And I took Ron on an exploration this today and this Cute. morning. <laughs> I mean, you said, Ron, you got to come up and try this. And I said, okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It got me on a float plane, then we came in, in the camp, onto a helicopter, whizzed us out here, we flew around, looked at, I don't know where we were, and then he put this chopper down, I don't know how we landed in the middle of yeah. everything. We walked out here, and just heaven, it is and, heaven. And you know, here, this is what I have to tell the people at home. I get a lot of emails and letters concerning the fact when I come to the north in Canada that, oh yeah, you can fly on float planes and stuff, but you need a lot of money. And I can tell you, you can come here with the Chisaski Mando Agency for less money than you spend an entire year on all the back ponds and really have an adventurous time. And um, it's very, very affordable for everybody. And they treat you really well. Like yeah, others, you know. yeah, and it's great fishing. And you know what? It's really Canadian. It is. <laughs> it's really Canadian. Frank, it's good to have you here at the real Scuttlebutt Lodge. This is where I stay during the summer most of the time. <laughs> and the summer's uh, nice and long for you now. You're, you're retired and you're just enjoying your life. You said that right. Yeah, heck. You wouldn't believe it how, uh, how many years that I had to show. You were telling me that you were about six years old and you watched that show for 21 years. You were a man when you finally, when I finally retired. Yeah, followed you all my life. There were some great moments on those shows. That I think the thing I liked the most about watching was that it was always fun. It was always fun. Well, that's what fishing is, Frankie. I mean, <laughs> the minute you start, a, a, you know, try to make it a, a, a meat source, you ruin the sport. It's a sport. Mm -hmm. Like I told you when you, we first talked. You, I said that a lot of guys always said to me, Red, if I can't eat the fish that I catch, I'm not going to go fishing. So I said, okay. I said, let's go skeet shooting. I'd like to see you cook up those clay pigeons you eat. Pull this across the top, and it just took it right off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Trying something a little different, a little wow. more spectacular. Well, you know, these fish have a cannibalistic nature to them. They just, they're oh, really aggressive, eh? They're really aggressive. aggressive. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a crankbait on. A lot of people always say, oh, you're using a fancy fly rod or fancy, no. We use everything everybody else uses at home. Regular tackle. So I'm gonna go put a crankbait on. Okay. Uh, a Team Daiwa minnow. It's about this long. I'm gonna see, I'll go upstream and try a bit while you're fighting this horse. You do that. I'll, I'll do that? that. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that then. Oh. Lots of commotion there, jeez. <laughs> Well, while Ron is out there catching all his met fish, I thought I would try something right out of my tackle box. I have this Team Daiwa minnow that I've had some good success up in the James Bay region for lake trout, but I wanted to try it on speckles. And uh, I cranked it out there, being a crankbait, and uh, it seems that uh, it seems that it's it seems to be the type of lure that takes bigger fish. I noticed up here, whenever I was fishing for the Lakers earlier uh, in my trip, I would catch, I would catch the bigger of the Lakers, and uh, I think this is a pretty big, I think this is a pretty big speckle. <laughs> Crankbaits are unique baits, very versatile. They're very versatile. Bring this guy over here in the shallows. Come here, come here, come here, come. The only thing about that is you gotta watch you don't get your hands caught all over the line. And the hooks. Here we go. Here we go. This is a nice one. That's a nice speckle, actually. That's a really nice speckle. Spinning or fly fishing, you can catch a lot of fish. Ron. What's that? Your wife was wondering where you were. <laughs> I only told her I was going in for some groceries. I'll be back in a couple of, I'll be a couple of weeks. In a day. I'll be back in a week. Well, we're up in the James Bay region fishing one of the uh, untamed rivers that runs through this vast region. And hey, if you listen, it's so quiet. A little bit of water, and that's it. Yeah. A little bit of water and lots oh, of stuff. That's right. Not many opportunities for getting together with your friends are as fun and rewarding as an adventure in Canada's wilderness. 25 years have passed since Ron and I fished in the small creek behind my parents' farm. 
Here we are, still laughing and making excuses to fish 25 years later. Well, everything went well today, Ron. Fantastic. What a day. What a day. We're going to have to head back to the main camp. But before we do that, folks, I think it's only fair that we catch one, maybe two nice speckles before we leave. I think it would be the most fitting closing for the day. And it's so quiet. Very quiet. But we don't want to end on a quiet note. We want to end on a loud note. Okay. Do your stuff, Ron. Okay. I got one. You got one? Yeah. I got a beauty. I just got to say to my wife, Louise, that... Uh, I, I didn't make it to the grocery store. I got sidetracked on the way, uh, <laughs> way there. I was looking at the, at the fresh fish uh, part and I said, you know, that's just And then you remembered that up. phone call. <laughs> Do you want to come up. up to James Bay and fish? It'll be fresh. All right, Ron, come on, get your guy on there. We're going to be rolling credits over this. You better get it in. <laughs> oh, what a great time. What a great time. Oh, all right. I can uh, I can hear our chopper, and that means goodbye. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me, Ron. Oh, it's great. Thank you for bringing me out. No problem. Trip of a lifetime. No problem. What are friends for, folks? <laughs> oh no, I think I hooked a big one. He's got the only snag of the night. Listen, we'll see you next week, folks. As we leave and end this adventure, many memories and newfound friends are made. Canada offers a playground second to none with its vast areas of wilderness and water. And yes, it is accessible to all, and the Chasasvi Mando Agency can make it a reality. Till next time, remember, the best lure is the one in the water.